Aquaponics is a combination of aquaculture and hydroponics, that is, a combination of fish farming and farming without soil. You can do it on a tiny scale, growing lettuce on top of a fish tank, or a large scale in a state-of-the-art greenhouse. Basically, it uses fish waste to fertilize plants. At the New England Food Show, Trevor Kenkel is displaying his micro farm. People are amazed that you can grow lettuce on top of a fish tank. I started growing with aquaponics about eight years ago, and now uh, I started Springworks uh, about two. With the help of investors, built an aquaponics greenhouse in Lisbon, Maine. The location is close to Bowdoin College, where Trevor went to school. On the way to the greenhouse, you'll pass some chickens. They do like lettuce scraps. So this is where the plants start out in the system. They're seeded into uh, mostly coco coir, which is the shavings off of a coconut husk. So it's a media where they can root out into and then later be transplanted out into the main area of the system once they're large enough. The substrate doesn't actually have any real nutrients uh, attached to it. They're watered with um, water from the system to get their nutrients early on. And then once the roots start to begin to be constrained by the, the trays, they get transplanted out and, and are allowed to grow to a, to a larger size. So this is our worm bin, um, scraps uh, from the harvest that aren't used for our chickens, you know, aren't fit for for human consumption go into here and uh, they're eaten up by the worms to create a product called vermicompost that we can use later uh, in the seeding of the system and it's a very nutrient rich uh, compost that you know allows us to recycle some of the unused parts of the plant back into the system and be more sustainable in that uh, area of our production. So once the plants get large enough in uh, the seedling stage, they're transplanted out into the you know, main area of the greenhouse. Um, and they're transplanted out into what we call stage two, which is a much smaller spacing than our mature spacing, but enough to allow them space to grow, um, to root out into the system. And then once they're large enough, they get transplanted out into the mature stage towards the end of the greenhouse and float back towards us. Um, so we harvest really on one end of the greenhouse, so the, the product is as fresh as possible because all of the processing is done really within 10 yards of, of where any head is, is harvested. And the system is very space efficient because we're really trying to give the plants what they need uh, space-wise at any given point in their life cycle. So our greenhouse is about 10 times more productive than traditional agriculture uh, because we can kind of change that spacing over time rather than being limited uh, you know, by soil and, and kind of staying in one spot. So the roots just grow right down into the nutrient-rich solution. The whole system moves like a water conveyor belt and these just float right on top. Uh, the system really gives the plants everything they need so they don't need to grow as extensive of a root system as a you know, traditional soil plant would. Um, so they can grow faster uh, in the system, usually about 15% faster. Uh, because they really have access to everything that they need. These won't have roots yet, but if we go oh. down towards the end, you'll see. Okay. So these will be moved into stage three soon, and you can kind of see the, the root system just starting to develop. Um, and then when they're a little bit bigger, they'll, they'll move into the next stage of growth in their life cycle. And the whole system, because it's contained like this, it uses about 90% less water. So we save about 1.8 million gallons of water a year. That goes all the way down to the end and then kind of is uh, pushed back to this end of the greenhouse and all flows into our sump. Yeah, we store water here. Uh, it makes the sump quicker to fill up. Uh, we have one pump that runs the whole system. After that, the water is basically falling from one stage to the next. It comes back up through here after it's pumped. And then it goes through our, our boiler system, uh, which is how we heat the greenhouse during the winter. Uh, we heat the water for the most part rather than heating the air. 
um, which is, is a lot more efficient, a lot more economical and, and sustainable because the water holds a lot of thermal mass so we can stabilize the temperature of the greenhouse using all the water out there. I mean, we have you know, over 20,000 gallons of water in the system that can hold heat and uh, store heat during the day and, and release it at night um, so that we don't have to spend as much energy operating this year round. Yep, this is the water flowing through the troughs. So it'll go underneath uh, and then breaks up into a manifold, splits into five parts, and that water all flows through the trough and comes back to eventually be pumped out again. So at this point, the water is now, it's being pushed into the tanks here, and that's all overflowing. And then it's gonna overflow out into the troughs. Those troughs are gonna overflow into the sump. Um, so, you know, that one pump, once it gets, the water gets um, to about our height, it's just gonna fall through the system until it gets back to the pump again. So this is the first step in the process. Us feeding the fish, the waste from the fish and the nitrates then go throughout our system to fertilize our plants out in the greenhouse. So we use tilapia. Um, they're a tropical fish that actually comes from the Nile. They're very easy to breed in captivity, so they're, they're convenient um, for a farm like us uh, that does a lot of stuff in-house. We have about a thousand fish that they run the system constantly, and it takes about nine months to a year before the tilapia are fully grown and um, able to go off to market themselves. Yeah, so this is where all the fish are kept in the system. They're kept in uh, five 1,200 gallon tanks. And the plumbing of the system is designed to flush waste you know, through the tanks where it eventually is, is filtered. It's where uh, solids are settled out by gravity. It's like a retention tank. The solids are then taken and reprocessed. Uh, of course, the, the nutrient-rich liquid flows out to the troughs and the growing area, uh, and that's what the, the lettuce uses to grow, which in turn cleans the water for the fish, and so that the system runs like a, like a small ecosystem. In a nutshell, aquaponics works like this. Fish waste creates ammonia. Bacteria then turns ammonia into nitrites, and then nitrates. The nitrates feed the plants, and then clean water is returned to the fish tank. So I started growing with aquaponics about seven years ago, uh, just with a tiny little system in my garage, and I became interested in it uh, and really in sustainable agriculture because uh, of the effects agriculture was having on ecosystems near me. Um, I grew up in Montana around a lot of, uh, a lot of big ag and um, as a young kid I kind of saw the effects uh, in a local creek near me that agriculture could have with fish loss. And, and we grow different varieties of lettuce. Um, we have green leaf, bib lettuce, red leaf lettuce, baby romaine lettuce. We have Love Walk on the outside, it's our green leaf lettuce, baby, baby green romaine. So this is Tat Soy, it's a, one of our Asian greens that we use in our mix. Baby red romaine, or baby purple romaine. This is bok choy. And then we have our mizuno, which we use in our, in our salad mix. Oh, this is our, our spinner, our salad spinner. So we, we wash and spin all our lettuce before we deliver it. So we wash our lettuce here, and then we have a chill room here. So this is where we do all our processing, make our mix, packaging. You can see here, all the packaging. And so I kind of stumbled upon aquaponics, you know, tried it out in, in my garage and, you know, kept building bigger and bigger systems, which eventually culminated in a, a greenhouse that I built in my backyard. Um, and that system was actually 
more productive than I anticipated. So uh, I started selling to a local restaurant, um, you know, growing all kinds of different things for them. And that's what really started to get me interested in aquaponics, you know, not just as a way to feed my own family sustainably, but to uh, feed others sustainably uh, and, and really look at it as a business. Um, so I started uh, designing a much larger system, you know, the system that we have now is about 30 times larger than that original greenhouse, um, and using the principles that I had kind of learned there, uh, applying them on a much larger scale, and um, developing uh, a tight business plan around it. The other side of our business is the micro farm, which kind of takes the concepts that we use uh, here and, and puts them in a system that's on a much um, smaller scale, but, but really operates on a lot of the same principles with uh, you know nitrification and mineralization happening in just a, a smaller area. So it, you know, it goes on top of a 10 gallon aquarium. We uh, have developed a, an educational curriculum that can, we can pair alongside it uh, and really allow people to get familiar with agriculture and with, with a hands-on way of doing science. Uh, in the classroom and, and really in their own home. Springworks still has a farm stand that came with the original farm. They sell their own lettuce. They also sell eggs from their free range chickens. Plus eggs and produce from other local farms. 